Hello, pre-calculus type people. Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Today is an exciting day. We're going to be learning about this little guy right here. E. Say what up to all the late testers. What up, late testers? What up? All the late testers. Okay, good enough. I said hello to the late testers. Um, base E. Oh, E. E is an amazing thing. E is this pretty little thing that happens when 1 plus 1 over n to the n goes to infinity. And what you'll see here is that it actually approaches a certain number. It starts off, if you plug in a 1, 1 plus 1 over 1 is 1, which is 2, really. 2 to the 1 is 2. And you're adding 1 to a half to the square power, 2.25. And the farther down you go, blah, 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 lots of numbers, lots of numbers, it's 2.71828. And E happens to be that number. And if it keeps going to infinity. So as N approaches infinity, you get 2.71828 dot 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 dot, which is E. E is this neat little number that once you hit calculus, it becomes really important and really cool and uh, does a lot of interesting things. But for now, let's just get acquainted with it. The number E is an irrational number. Like pi, there's no fraction that can show it. Uh, defined as the number of this as n goes to infinity. E occurs so often in applications, it's often referred to as the exponential function. The exponential function. This thing happens all the time. Kind of like pi, it just kept happening, so eventually we gave it a name. and We call it E. And it's approximately 2.71828182818, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so here's what the graph of E looks like. Um, if you were to plug in a few numbers, obviously, there's certain numbers that uh, are the, the obvious ones, I guess. Uh, let's start with negative 1, 0, 1, 2. If you plug in a negative 1 into E, there is a calculator button for this, actually. It's this right above natural log right here. You press the blue second button and the natural log. And that takes you to e to the power of whatever. Plug in a negative 1. And notice it's a positive value. So I'm going to get positive roughly 0.4. I'm just going to graph it as 0.4 because I can't graph anything better than that. Plug in a 0. e to the 0 is 1. Anything with a 0 is 1. Plug in a 1. You get e, which is 2.71828. Right here. Plug in a 2, you get e squared, which is 7.4, blah, blah, blah. So here he is. The exponential function. I think it's really close to the x-axis. Now, e is a very important thing as far as these two points go. 0, comma, 1. That is your key point to remember. e goes through 0, comma, 1. And it's always positive, unless you move it somewhere. Uh, domain is all real numbers. Range y is greater than 0. It'll never be negative. You have an asymptote at y equals 0. Um, it's increasing. Uh, you have a, the big characteristic here is a y-intercept at 0, 1. This is the important guy. All right, 0, 1, that's the important one. Uh, so from here, um, the graphs of e and uh, negative e to the x plus 5, uh, I'm just going to cheat because, well, why not? Um, negative e to the x plus 5, negative second natural log, which is e to the x plus 5. So obviously you see that it's uh, shifting it up 5 units. Moves your axis or your uh, horizontal asymptote up five units. Um, domain is all real numbers. Range y is less than five. That's what the negative does right here. The negative makes it flip down like that. This one here, clear that out. Second e four minus x plus one. So that's going to move it over here on this one. That's going to move it up one. And it's going to go 
uh, opening up the opposite direction and moving to the right four. Kind of like that. Up one, right four, opening the opposite direction. Instead of increasing, always decreasing. So what I'd like you to do for before you get to class tomorrow, graph those on here and come up with domain range asymptotes and we'll check them when we get to class. Apart from that, that's all she wrote.